Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to to our course. Yeah. Hope you guys have a good break. Um, okay, so today we're going to resume our lecture. So previously we have talked about We'll talk about um, scientific writing. Okay, um, the last two weeks. So we have talked about scientific writing, um, and then we discussed about research proposal. Okay, so scientific writing is the is the uh, a big topic. Okay, under scientific writing, there are various types of documents that we have discussed, and each of that is uh, it serves uh, different purposes. Yeah? For example, research proposal, uh, when you have to write it before you uh, execute a, a research, right? Before a research is done, uh, and that is what you have to prepare uh, for your FYP next semester. And then we have thesis. Okay? That is another document, which is also uh, considered as a scientific uh, document, scientific writing, right? The, so thesis is written after you have done uh, certain types of research. What kind of research? FYP, MSc, uh, and PhD. Okay, and all of this uh, research, uh, the purpose or the the aim of the research. Um, it's, it's part of the degree requirements. Okay? Uh, so meaning to say that thesis is not just uh, a typical report, it's a special kind of report uh, of research uh, that is needed for the confirmation of degree. So that's the, the difference between thesis and also a normal report. Okay, so <clears throat> thesis is a, is a is a special terminology lah. so for uh, for academic uh, writing okay so uh, in today's topic we are going into another type of documents under uh, scientific writing uh, it's called scientific papers or scientific articles uh, when in in academia when we talk about uh, articles papers uh, journal papers they are they refer to the same thing articles normally like um so i, I just uh, do not want you guys to get confused whenever people talk about when people mention about articles people talk about journal papers so you might be confused if you do not know that uh, they are actually the same okay so some sometimes I, I might say article sometimes i might say papers or sometimes i might say journal check the journals um what else yeah, I think that's the two terminologies uh, being used widely. Okay, so you have to know that they actually refer to the same thing, article. Yeah? Papers, articles are the same. Okay, so today we are going to look at uh, what is uh, what what are needed in scientific paper writing. Uh, so you would see some similarities of uh, the important points that we have discussed for proposal and uh, thesis, but there are also some differences, okay? So that's what we're gonna cover today. Yeah, so I have uploaded the lecture notes so last night. I hope you um, get it. Okay. Um, 
let me show the picture in this one. So these are the subtopics that we're going to cover. Uh, first, we're going to have, we're going to look at uh, the purpose or introduction of scientific paper. What's the purpose of it and what is actually how it looks like uh, scientific papers. And then uh, the main part is the structure of scientific papers. So what are the important sections of it? And the last subtopic is uh, what are the tools that we can use for uh, literature review. So literature review is a process of reading, reviewing articles. Okay, so uh, you have to know what it means. Um, and it's actually a process of reading, uh, reading and comparing uh, different words, uh, different articles and get the points from it. Uh, and you need it because you need to write your, uh, let's say your documents, like proposal or thesis. Yeah? Okay, so first thing first, uh, what is the purpose of writing a scientific paper? So when we say scientific paper, uh, what comes to your mind is article, yeah, article. Uh, and why actually, why is it important to understand the existence of scientific papers or articles? Because uh, articles, papers, they serve as uh, very important uh, reference as a very important source of reference for scientists, for researchers in general. Uh, why, why papers? Why not just uh, websites on the internet? Why not just, um, you know, anything that people maybe convey orally or informally? Uh, so it's because scientific papers, they are, they have gone through a systematic uh, process whereby you know like is a is is uh, is done after a research is done okay when we say research research means it involves a period of time in the lab right uh, for example fyp after 6 months uh, you have done research in the lab and only then you uh, write a thesis and from the thesis also you can actually write an article uh, let's say the results are good. Okay, uh, so it means that um, the papers uh, they are written after a thorough research has been done in the lab. Yeah, rather than if let's say you see anything on the website or on the blog or on the social media, anyone can post anything. But how true it is, how uh, legit it is, we do not know, right? So there is no promise for it, although sometimes it can be true, but sometimes it can uh, it cannot be true as well. So uh, that's why in academia, academia means in uh, in academic in uh, yeah in research or in academic world, we rely uh, on scientific papers very much. Okay, and those are the reliable sources. And also uh, another thing is uh, scientific papers. Basically, they are written by researchers. So when we say researchers, who are the researchers? People who are studying at the university, people who are working at the university. So people who are working in research uh, organizations. So it means that they have some credibilities uh, to do the research. It's not just anyone, you know? Uh, so that's the difference. Um, and ha having said that, it means that they have certain uh, qualifications yeah, to conduct the research or mean to say that they can be trusted, even though sometimes there might be some um, 
fake reports, whatever, but uh, at least uh, most of the time uh, we can guarantee that um, their, uh, their uh, qualifications may help to uh, to give like meaningful or reliable information. Yeah? Because when we read the articles, we, when we read the papers, we want to get something from the papers. We want to get some knowledge from it, isn't it? So of course, in, if you want to get some knowledge, you have to make sure that the the source of knowledge is reliable. Yeah? Uh, so that's why you go to university. You don't go to just, you know, like uh, why, how you get the degree is because how you get the degree, you are uh, get get the degree from a university. So why university? Because at the university, uh, the university appoint lecturers. Who are the lecturers? Lecturers are those who have uh, qualifications lah, to teach, isn't it? Uh, so it's not anyone can teach. Uh, so that's that's um, how you see, uh, you know, uh, whether how reliable the source, how reliable the place is, and stuff like that. So the same thing goes to when we get knowledge from papers. We must make sure that the source is reliable. Okay. All right. So that's the importance of it. And for the researchers, like now I'm a researcher, I'm a lecturer, and I'm also a uh, researcher actually re lecturer what's the difference between lecturer and teacher lecturer uh, lecturers do research okay that's the biggest difference uh, uh, both lecturers and teachers teach uh, teach uh, we teach at the university teachers teach at schools but the difference is uh, lecturers uh, we have to do research we have to do research we have to write scientific papers as well so that is one of our responsibilities because we need to communicate the science to the public. We need to communicate the science to other scientists. Uh, so that is uh, one of the responsibilities of lecturers. So for us, uh, why we have to write scientific papers? Because we want to make sure that the knowledge is uh, disseminated. Uh, it's not just kept in the lab. So if we imagine if let's say uh, every lecturer just do the experiment, but we don't write a paper. So what happened is that um, the investment on the experiments will be just wasted and there will be no knowledge generated. There will be, there will be no knowledge shared. Okay, so that is actually uh, the purpose of uh, scientific papers yeah? uh, for us to communicate the knowledge, communicate the science. To, to tell people what, what is actually the findings that we got in the lab. Okay, so that is the purpose of it. Um, and of course, uh, for for the university, they, uh, like like us at the university, we have certain uh, KPI, call it uh, Key Performance Index. We need to write papers uh, at least every year, one paper. Uh, that is our target. Lah. Uh, so that one is for the personal achievement. For me, like okay, if let's say you write, if, uh, if, uh, if the lecturer write more and more papers means that she he or she will establish her career better, doesn't it? Get more connections, uh, get more exposure and things like that. So that one is on the personal level, but on the uh, society level is for the knowledge sharing and for the knowledge dissemination. Uh, dissemination is um, um, penyebaran, lah, penyebaran knowledge, lah, uh, ilmu. Yeah. So that is um, the the science. What that's the purpose of scientific papers. Yeah. Um, so how, what kind of papers are there? Actually, when we talk about scientific papers, it's still general term. There are many types of papers. There are many types of articles. Uh, so if let's say you are doing a later literature review. Uh, for the assignment for this course and also for for your FYP, you will notice there are different types of papers. There are research papers, there are review articles or review papers. There are also mini review, uh, mini review, uh, and also there is also short communication. They call it short com. Uh, so you would see the level of it uh, on top of the article. Okay, uh, so. That one is a uh, letter for you to know that uh, articles are divided into many types. For example, if when, when we talk about review article, uh, the article is about reviewing only. 
So it's about comparing different words and try to see uh, what's the key points, what's the key differences, what's the key similarities, things like that. Okay, uh, and that is called review paper. Mini review means something smaller than review paper. So if review paper um, takes about maybe 20 pages or 25 pages or 30 pages sometimes. So mini review could be half of it or maybe like less than 10 pages, maybe seven pages. So it's like mini. Uh, but when we talk about uh, uh, research paper, research paper or research article. Uh, so that one is, um, is an article, uh, article that reports the, the work done by the researcher. Okay. Uh, for example, if let's say I have done certain works, certain works in the lab, and I got like good results, and I want to <coughs> I want to share it. <clears throat> so I write a research paper. The, uh, the the type of the article is research article. Okay. So uh, so I would I would write like um all the key things like materials, methods, results, discussion, and so on. So the review article, just now, let me say a review article. Article are divided into many types. This is just some of it. Uh, there are many other terminologies used, but uh, these are the basic ones. Uh. Research <coughs> papers, and then uh, review paper, and then mini review. And then it's also short com. Okay, so um, research paper, you would see uh, the paper, it will have all the, the, the methodology. I mean, like apart from the other section, intro, methodology, res uh, results and discussion. This is the main uh, differences between research paper and review paper. In review paper and mini review, you, you will not see any methodology section. Okay. Uh, no methodology section. Yes. Uh, short com. For short com is actually uh, um, a short version of research paper. Uh, but you might not see a methodology section, but you can see that is a small work. Uh, so this one short com normally it reports a uh, much smaller work or uh, research lah, small research, no small work, smaller work than the research paper. Okay, All right. So this is just for you to know. Uh, so there are many types of articles, uh, and where are all these scientific papers uh, or uh, article research papers are available? Papers and this one. So this one, they are published by journals. Okay, journals. Journals are bodies that publish the papers. Uh, meaning to say that when when I write a paper, uh, remember when I say manuscript, it's not yet something that is not published is called manuscript. So when I have a draft, okay, I have a draft. So uh, if let's say it is a complete draft, we call it. Uh, manuscript okay let's say manuscript so i send this to journal journal ni macam uh, publisher lah publisher for articles uh, but sometimes we say publisher is more for books yeah? uh, but for you to understand at this point it's like publisher okay so when i send to journal there are many types of journals many types of uh, journals uh, national or the one in Malaysia, the one abroad, and so, uh, and there are many themes as well. Themes means um, many uh, fields or niche areas. Yeah? For example, uh, biotech is still considered as a big uh, niche. So under biotech, there is a, let's say, journal of uh, bioprocess technology, journal of maybe animal biotech. So there are many types of journals. Uh, so if let's say I want to send uh, my manuscript, I have to make sure that my uh, the journal that I send to um, it receives or accepts uh, manuscripts of my field. Yeah, 
For example, my niche area is uh, bioprocess technology. So I have to send uh, my manuscript to journals that publish uh, that publishes uh, articles of my field. OK, so when I send to journals and what the journals do, the journals think they are the, they are the uh, staff. They lie. Eh? Uh, they are people who review it, check the manuscript, whether it, uh, it is suitable or not to be published in that journal. And then if let's say it is suitable, then uh, what the staff will do, the staff will send the manuscript to a reviewer. We call it reviewer. So it means that they will actually examine they will examine the manuscript. So they will not just publish just like that. Because uh, as I said, is a is a very um, systematic and uh, it's a thorough process lah, at the journal. So it means that they have to see whether what I report is correct or not. So how they do that, they appoint reviewers, normally two reviewers uh, to check my journals. So the reviewers are lecturers from other places actually so uh, let's say a uh, professor in you know in the field in the same field like from maybe from the us uh, so they will check the manuscript yeah? they will check the manuscript where the i mean like because they are experts so they know how to check it yeah? uh, so uh, so after the review uh, the, the reviewers will give the decision whether the manuscript is good or not Sometimes there are certain level of uh, uh, decision. They can reject, they can accept with minor revision, they can accept with major revision, or they can accept without any correction. So it means that that is the level of decision. So if let's say corrections is needed, so the manuscript will be sent back to the authors and the authors will have to correct it and send it again for another review. Okay, so you can see how thorough the process is. Uh, so once the manuscript is um, is acceptable, and only then the journals will publish. And once it is published, the manuscript is called article. Okay, published as article or papers. So that's the process of um, reviewing it, reviewing uh, the the article review. Eh? Uh, so once it is uh, published. Uh, so it depends on the journal as well. Uh, sometimes the journal it has uh, their, uh, it has monthly publication. So it means that every month the journal will publish. But some journals they publish once in six months, uh, once in a year. Uh, so it depends on the journals. So when it is published and only then it is available on the uh, journal website or on the search engine. Uh, so that's why you could find the article sometimes uh, on the uh, Google Scholar. So that's that's how it is. Yeah? So so yeah, my point here is that the the papers are published by uh, journals. Yeah? There are many types of journals uh, located in different countries, and they have different uh, areas, different niche areas, different themes, yeah? different themes. Or different um, different tema lah tema. So ada yang biotech, ada yang zoology, ada yang plant biotech. Even biotech itself is is a broad uh, group or broad broad field. So they are bioprocess, they are bioinformatics. So uh, normally they are, they will go to a much smaller niche areas. Yeah? So in order to ease the uh, the publication and the search by the uh, scientists, applied by the researchers. Okay, all right. Um, now let's have a look at what are the structure of a scientific paper. Okay, now here, this one refers to uh, journal papers, eh? oh, or it's not journal papers, actually. research, research paper. So just, just now I mentioned review article, can. So uh, here is uh, for research paper or research article. Okay, so if you see here the, uh, the components of a scientific paper, so you can see there are some similarities uh, with uh, the components of um, proposal and also thesis. But what's the difference? The difference is that uh, scientific papers, they are more um, 
concise, means they are more compact. If you see thesis, normally the thesis, uh, the, the number of pages is about, for FYP is maybe 30 to 50 pages. Okay, but for scientific paper, uh, the length of the paper is maybe seven to eight pages only, okay, covering all of this. Meaning to say that um, although the components are the same, so the way how you write it might be different. For uh, scientific papers, it might be more simplified. Okay? Some of the methods might be not that really detailed. Uh, you can just mention that Okay, uh, maybe the protein quantification is best with a method uh, introduced by maybe uh, Smith at all 2018. So you just mentioned like that and people can go directly to that source in order to get uh, more details about the method. Okay, so I'll go into detail of the design. So here you can see that, um, yeah, the scientific paper must have a title. Uh, and also the name of authors yeah, uh, below the title. Abstract, yeah, abstract is, is compulsory actually in a lot of documents, not just um, not just scientific uh, writing, uh, not just in scientific papers, not just in thesis, not just in proposal. You can also see abstract in books, right? Uh, so abstract is actually a, a compulsory section for any for most of the documents. Yeah? And then there is also introduction, materials and methods, results and discussion. Okay, for this one, some of the papers, uh, the format of the journals, they have to follow the format of the journal. So some of the journals, they, they allow you to merge the two sections, so results and discussion. But some journals, they, uh, they have their own format, whereby they, they uh, rule out that uh, results should be in one section and then discussion in one section it means that they are separated okay uh, so it depends on the format of the journal too uh, and then conclusion acknowledgement references okay. so a title okay example of title so this one is example of titles of journal papers so similar to thesis or similar to proposal the title must be um, explanatory. It must explain what the article is all about. A good title means that from uh, from the title you would know. Uh, you would, you can expect uh, what the article will be. Okay, so these are all the examples. Uh, and what it should be. The title shouldn't be really long. It shouldn't be. Um, it shouldn't be ambiguous. You know what ambiguous is? Should not be yeah, the title should not be ambiguous. Ambiguous means something that is not clear. Something that is it doesn't tell you clearly. Okay, uh, so this one shouldn't be lah. So it should be clear. In contrast, it should be clear. It should be simple. It should be concise. It should be informative lah. Yeah? And um, because when we talk about journals. Uh, they are very specific to our field. So the use of terminologies uh, that are related to our field, for example, to biotech, is a lot. Eh? Uh, so it's different from journal. Journal papers is different from, let's say you write an article in a newspaper, whereby you know that the newspaper is, is going to be read by the public. Eh? Uh, so when we talk about public, some of them might not be studying science. Some of them might not know the terminologies very well. So the way how you write uh, for journal papers is different from the way how you write for an article that is going to be read by the public. Okay. So here um, you you can use uh, you can use all the eh, you can use. You can use the uh, the terminologies related to your field. Okay, so that's the title. 
Uh, and then the second, <clears throat> the second uh, point is abstract. Okay, so abstract means some actually is uh, the way how it is written is quite the same as um, quite the same as uh, thesis abstract. Okay, thesis abstract. So it means that uh, an abstract of an article it should have. Um, if you still remember the rule that I mentioned last time, uh, the first statement should be the general statement, and then it should it should go into uh, problem step problem statement, and then uh, aim, yeah, uh, methods in brief, uh, results in brief, the key points or the key results in brief, and then conclusion. Okay, so all of these points should also be in in an abstract of an article of a research article. Okay. And what you should also know that there should be there shouldn't be any tables, graph, or references. Because it's a short, it's, it's a short write-up. It's only one paragraph. Yeah? One paragraph. Uh, if you think about an A4 page, uh, font uh, 12. Uh, font size of 12, it should be just half of the F4 page. It shouldn't be more than that, actually, because um, the limit is some of the journal, it depends on the journal, some of the journals uh, uh, set the limit of 250 words, some of the journals may set 300 words, uh, but it's uh, normally it's maximum of 300 words. Okay, uh, there is no citation as well, shouldn't be any citation. Yeah, no citation. So is is uh the the rule is the same as the thesis abstract. Okay. No citation. Okay. So introduction. Um. So this one introduction. Uh, the concept is is the same as the thesis introduction, but it should be uh, it should be. Shorter lah, because this one is an article again. As I said just now, the whole document is about seven to eight pages. So uh, the introduction might be just like a one page, a four page yeah, uh, for the article. So what it should have, introduction, it should have um, maybe the first paragraph, paragraph one, uh, general background of the research. Okay. And then paragraph two, you go into the problem statement. Okay, and then here, okay, in from introduction onwards, you can cite, you can cite. It's only in the abstract that you cannot cite. Okay, uh, so here you can cite like you can mention what's the problem in the past, what what are the previous words that have been done, limitation of their words, right? And then that brings you to the uh, paragraph three of uh, the aim and objective. Okay, so you can see the pattern is the same. It's just the length and the way how you write it. It should be more simplified than a thesis. Okay. Uh, a good introduction present the nature and scope of the problem, which is actually this one. Yeah. Uh, review the previous and current reference. Right. Okay. This one is actually the problem statement. Okay, use the present tense. Uh, evaluate rather than just summarizing. Uh, so evaluate. So you when you when you state the previous words, you are trying to compare. You should actually uh, come with your own stance, with your own opinion. What are all the previous works all about? What are the limitations? That is your judgment, your evaluation. Okay, so this one should be in the problem statement as well. Okay. Uh, state very briefly the method used why it was chosen together with the very chosen objective. So this one is when you uh, start to mention your objective. Okay, so that's the introduction. And then the next session is materials and methods. Um, so uh, the way how you write it, you use past tense. Okay, that's the same. But uh, how you write it is more simplified. Yeah? More simplified than a thesis. Then uh, in thesis. OK. 
Okay, and you have to cite. So, for example, the methods you is based on certain words. So you have to cite the methods. You have to cite. So if you don't cite, it means that the method comes from uh, from you. So if let's say you use other methods, but you don't cite, it sounds like it comes from you, but it's actually not true, isn't it? Uh, so that's why you have to apply the citation. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I'll go into an example of an article after this uh, to see how uh, it looks like in an article. And then the next section, results and discussion. Okay, this one is, um, again, is much shorter than the results for a master or PhD thesis. Okay, so that's the biggest difference. Um, yeah, in some journals, you may need to separate results from the discussion. Or in some journals, you can merge it. So it is less on the format of the journal. Must use good results to approve or disprove a hypothesis. Okay, so here, um, the same thing for thesis, when you talk about results and discussion, because you have done a research, so you must actually highlight your own results first. Okay, so that is, uh, you report the results. So when you want to discuss your results, then only then you can compare your results with uh, the results in the literature. Okay. So this is this is actually the way how you write it. You present your results first. Present your results first. Okay. And in the discussion, you compare. Uh, you compare your results with the previous results or uh, other results. Okay. Report only those results which significant conclusions can be made. Okay. This one is what is what is meant by this statement is that uh, sometimes when you do work in the lab, there are so many results. But you have to scheme your results. You have to evaluate on yourself uh, which one is actually the most significant, which one actually is the one that is meaningful. Okay, so this is what is meant by this statement. Uh, so the same thing for your FYP later. When you do your FYP, you have to differentiate the results. Whether these results is is it, uh, you know, some 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 of the results in the lab is just actually small results. Uh, it might not be that it, uh, it, it, it will help you to get uh, to achieve your objective, but it's not the most significant. So you have to evaluate your results as well. Okay, uh, so that's uh, the thing that you have to do now when you, you want to decide the results that you want to report. Even a negative result, if you defend it, is a result. Okay, so when you talk about result, it's not just positive results. It's not just results that you think uh, that will actually um, answer your hypothesis. Sometimes the negative results, it can also be a good results. Uh, the reason, it, it depends on how you justify it. Yeah? Sometimes it's, it's, not at, it's not that when you set the hypothesis, you must achieve that hypothesis. Sometimes the, the hypothesis is, is uh, not meant to be true. Yeah? So uh and how you know that when you get the results negative results many many times uh provided that everything is uh what you do is you know right uh, based on uh, uh, a correct method but still you get negative results so that is when you know that uh, your hypothesis might not be true and how you discuss it is actually uh more important and maybe you can discuss um what are the maybe the causes of it, why it is, it can't be a uh, word, things like that, okay? So meaning to say that uh, in the lab, it's not just about um, results that can support your hypothesis. Sometimes the results can also be the one that disapprove your hypothesis, okay? All right, uh, summarize in tables of graphic form. So how you present the results, uh, it can be in the form of graphs, for the quantitative uh, data, and it can be in the form of pictures, 
Okay, so this is in terms of results, it can be graphs, can be pictures. How you know which one is uh, suitable? It depends on your data. Uh, so if your data is quantitative, you know quantitative is uh, based on numbers. So it's best to uh, put it in, into props or into table. So that is much easier to uh, compare and see. Okay, but if let's say your results are qualitative, qualitative means something to do with the characteristics, with the features. For example, the morphology of the uh, bacterial structure, right? You cannot put it into numbers. Yeah? So what you have to do, you have to snap the pictures. You have to put in your articles on in your thesis. So it is in the form of pictures and it depends on uh, sometimes the, the pictures is uh, the gel band. Uh, depends on the nature of the research. I cannot say it should be always the pictures from the microscope. I cannot say that. Uh, so it can be pictures from the gel. It can, pictures, it can be pictures from maybe your culture itself. If let's say you are growing a plant shoe culture, so you know you want to you want to show how the shoot looks like and things like that. So you have to snap the pictures. So you may not use microscope for microorganism. You may use microscope, right? And then you have to get the pictures from the microscope, things like that. Okay. So if you are uh, analyzing protein using uh, we call it gel, yeah? when you see when you can see the bands. Um, so uh, that is another type of pictures. Yeah? So the, the types of pictures uh, is also different from one research to another. Okay. Um, all right, so that's results and discussion. And when we talk about results, uh, especially for uh, quantitative data, okay, something that related to numbers, um, it's not just about reporting uh, the data but also you have to do what we say statistical analysis. So you have learned this in your first year, right? Statistics. So that's why we introduced you the course. So this, this statistical analysis is like, for example, the easiest one. Eh? The easiest one is like the mean value, the average values, uh, standard deviation. Standard deviation, uh, what else? Maybe the median, things like that. So this, this information is actually secondary data. We call it secondary information, so secondary data. So for example, the easiest one for you to visualize now, the average. Let's say you have triplicates, uh, uh, triplicate, uh, replicate, you know replicate, right? Let's say you have readings like that, so you have uh, three parallel experiments, you have the data and they are actually the same. Like uh, when you replicate one, replicate two, replicate three, let's say the conditions are the same, but you just want to have more data in order to make sure that the data are reliable, the data are, um, the data are uh, reproducible. Okay, so uh, let's say at the end, you cannot just mention that uh, replicate one is this, replicate two is this, replicate three is this. So the best way for you to present the data, for example, if let's say you are talking about uh, protein concentration, okay, protein concentration, and you have uh, replicate one and two and three. So the best way how you present the final value, you would say the average, yeah, the average, protein concentration of sample of this sample is this, for example. So when you when you mention the word average, uh, so like me as a as a researcher, I know that you have done replication and the average it comes from uh, more than one data. Okay, maybe two or three. So it means that you have done replication, the things are reproducible. So it's like it's not just by chance you get this result. Okay, Th that is the meaning of it. Okay, and this kind of average uh, mean, average means I'm going to standard deviation. They comes from statistical analysis. 
so finding the mean is actually the simplest, the simplest. Um, uh, sorry, mean is actually the simplest information obtained from statistical analysis, but there are actually more. It's not just about mean. There are also standard deviation. They are also um, want to find the difference between replicate one, replicate two, replicate th uh, three, and you want to say that there is a significant difference or not. Remember in statistics, you you always um, conclude whether there is a significant difference. There is no significant difference. Yeah? Uh, remember the hypothesis, null hypothesis, alternative hypothesis, which one is you want to accept? There is a difference or not. Uh, so that is actually when you you want to have uh, when you have replicates, you want to say that are there significant difference or not? If let's say there is no significant difference between the replicates, means your data is reliable. Then that the that the base lah, maknanya they are reproducible, uh, things like that. So that's the meaning of uh, what you have studied in statistics. You do hear that? You not accept alternative ke, uh, null hypothesis. Uh, that one lah, um, relate to the comparison of your data. Okay, so you have to apply statistical analysis in your uh, data analysis for your research, yeah? including FYP. You have to apply your knowledge in statistics. Uh, right in the past tense. Okay, yes. Um, so that is results. So the uh, the second part of this section is discussion. Okay, discussion. This one. Uh, it's one of the common mistake by students. Students tak faham apa sebenarnya discussion ni. So, uh, what I what I notice, uh, uh, not just undergrads lah. Undergrads are like you all. Postgraduates are those yang doing master or PhD. They also do the same mistakes. They are just reporting the results. They just say that this result is like this, like this, like this, and then uh, it shows this trend. Okay, but they forgot to discuss. Uh, so, ni yang sangat selalu yang student uh, ni lah uh, commit the mistake. Uh, so, they forget to discuss. So, what is meant by discussion? Discussion means you discuss your results. You discuss the results. Uh, how you discuss the results? You explain the relevance of the finding. Okay, let's say you find that uh, the trend is like so and so. So, what is actually the possible reasons. Sometimes you might not, you cannot find the actual reason, right? Uh, there is nothing absolute sometimes in research or in science, but what you can do is you can find the possible reasons, the relevance or the possible causes, possible causes, why is so and so. Okay? Uh, so for, uh, in order to find the possible causes, you have to find the information from the articles. Maybe some of the previous works, they have uh, state, you know, like they have mentioned about uh, the causes of uh, so and so. So you can cite those people. Uh, so that's how you discuss. And also how uh, the other way you discuss is when you compare your results with other works. So like this is what you got, what other works have Done. Maybe like you are using different substrate, but other works they use different substrate, but the product is the same. But how is the comparison? Which one is actually maybe good or, you know, like you can suggest something. So that's how you discuss. You compare and also you explain the possible causes. Um, do not make personal assumption. Okay, this one is, uh, there is a way how you can actually avoid uh, making your own assumption like you can use certain words for example it can uh, you can use certain terms that may sound uh, not really strong okay uh, or something that doesn't sound it as a fact something like that like, um, yeah do not make this assumption show how the results of your yeah this is what I mentioned just some compare with previous words. Eh? Okay, so that's result and discussion. Uh, so normally in results and discussion session, you would have a lot of tables and figures. Um, so this one is uh, to, to explain your results, for example, graphs or tables. And then um, 
and you should provide a caption for every table and figure. Okay, nanti I tunjuk benda ni. Okay, the most important point is you you cannot copy and paste figures or tables from any article or book without getting official permission from the journal or publisher. You could reconstruct the figures and tables, but not copy paste. So this is, I think I have mentioned about it. So when, if let's say you want to write your own article or your thesis, you cannot just simply copy and paste uh, the figures from other articles because they are actually copyrighted materials. So if let's say the journal found you uh, use their, their figures or tables without permission, they can actually sue you. Yeah? So that is actually the uh, consequence. So how you want to do, let's say you want to also still, you want to use the figures or tables. So what you can do, you have options. First, maybe you can write official letter or email to the journal, get the permission. Uh, that one is a bit tedious. The other way that you can do is you can reconstruct the figures and tables. Means that if let's say they have this kind of table, you, you may have certain um, addition of information that you want to add to the table. So you re reconstruct a new table, use the information, but add some more information that maybe you uh, summarize from other sources. So uh, at the end, at, at the caption, uh, you can use the word adapted from uh, the source. Okay, uh, So that's what adapted from means but uh, not uh, simply copy and paste. Eh? For example, here, uh, for example, I, I think I, I've shown last time. So this one, reproduce with permission from British Sugar. So this is from my thesis, actually. So this figure belongs to uh, British Sugar. British Sugar is a, is a company. Uh, so I cannot use simply use without asking for permission and like once I have the permission, I have to mention this statement, reproduce with permission. Okay, for example, this one, uh, this one, this graph, uh, the author produced by themselves means that they plot the graph by themselves. So they don't have to mention about uh, getting the permission because this, this anything that comes from you, yourself, like you plot the graph, your own results, that one belongs to you. So you don't have to say it's from, from somewhere else. It's from you, isn't it? So it's, it's understood that it's from you. So you can see that there is no information saying that it's uh, reproduced or adapted from whatever. Okay. Uh, yeah, this one is like uh, examples of figures that you can insert in the article. This, this one is a graph. Okay, graphs. And this is what is... is uh, meant by caption, figure caption, means that explanation of the graph. So the, for the figure caption, it should be uh, below the uh, graph, below the figure. This one is figure. Huh? Figure is like, figure is a general term. Figure can be pictures, figure can be graph, eh? um, but um, normally you label it as figure. Huh? Yeah? So this one is caption. So the caption should describe the figure. Okay, for the table, you can see this is table, right? Uh, for the the caption, the caption must be on top of the table. So that is the format in scientific or uh, in academic writing. Yeah? The caption for the table must be on top of the table. For the figure, it should be below. Okay, so another type of figure is just now you can see this is graph, this is picture, right? Or uh, maybe diagram, uh, diagram. Um, so this one is, uh, we call it pie chart, isn't it? So you have to know the the right term for every type of the figure. So this pie chart is normally is uh, is used to show the composition, the proportion, or the percentage of uh, the components. Uh, so the suitability of whether you want to use bar chart, you want to use pie chart, you want to use graph, it depends on your uh, data. Okay, some data they are suitable to be presented in a pie chart. Some data are suitable to be presented in graphs. Okay, so that's all about figures and tables.
Okay, the next section is conclusion. Conclusion is um, is normally it's just one paragraph or maybe two paragraphs. So it's a short section concluding the findings, the main findings. What is actually uh, the key points, takeaways of the research? Okay, so that's the conclusion. Uh, you can also sometimes mention maybe future work should consider like one sentence on uh, recommendation. Yeah, that one is also can, uh, and that one is uh, optional. La. Sometimes uh, some papers may have it, some papers may not have it. Okay. Um, yeah, that's conclusion, right? So after conclusion, acknowledgement. So uh, in papers, you should acknowledge uh, who give you the money to carry out the research. So if let's say the research is uh, funded by certain research grant, uh, research grant, research grant is like, uh, is, um, grant is like, is, is a provision of money by certain uh, organization, for example, uh, universities, uh, Ministry of Science, for example, Ministry of Higher Education, they give money in the form of grant. We call it grant, research grant. So under research grant, we can use the money for uh, buying the chemicals, for paying the researchers, for for many things, for anything under the research. Okay. So here uh, we should give credit. We should acknowledge the the funder. Of course, lah. Yeah, kalau orang bagi uh, duit kan, of course lah kita, we have to acknowledge lah. So, it's not for free, isn't it? Uh, so, the research is funded by uh, this and this. And the, there, there is a certain number or court number of the grant uh, given or provided by Ministry of Higher Education, for example. Uh, so, that's the body that you have to acknowledge. And also, sometimes uh, individuals uh, or companies that may give you some help. Yeah? Uh, maybe you you seek help from technician to do certain analysis. So you should mention the person in the acknowledgement. Or maybe the institution. Sometimes it's not uh, individuals, but it's institution where the research is carried out uh, or where you use the equipment. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's acknowledgement. It's a very short section. It's like maybe two or three sentences it depends on uh, who you thank in your acknowledgement and then references okay this one is the same lah. references is a list of references that you have to list down uh, uh, whoever you cited in the papers and the the format is different based on the journals so some journals use apa some journals use uh, harvard depends on the format. Okay, so those are all the sections uh, in a research paper, in a research scientific paper. So it must have a title, abstract, intro, materials and methods, or sometimes they call it methodology, only methodology. It is the, it's actually refers to the same thing. Results and discussion, conclusion, acknowledgement, references. Okay, so the last part, Okay, please bear with me uh, for another 15 minutes, maybe. So the last part is tools for literature review. So this one is additional parts. La. I think I have uh, amended these slides. Uh, if you compare your slides with your friends from other groups, uh, they might not have this. Uh, this is, I think, just some tips and tricks. Yeah, How uh, the literature review, how your literature review can be, um, can be eased. Yeah. How, how to... What are the tools that you can use to search uh, papers, articles? Okay, so first we look into academic search engines. Academic search engines. Okay, I know that you know Google. Google is a general search engine. You can use Google for anything, isn't it? Including papers. But uh, when we talk about uh, articles, uh, we want something more specific. What we want something more organized. Uh, so if let's say you just Google, you, you Google something like maybe bioethanol fermentation on Google search, right? So everything come out. There will be YouTube, you'll be 
uh, blog posts, there will be social media posts, there will be uh, whatever related to bioethanol, isn't it? But in, in academic, we may not want other sources. We may not want those social media posts. We may not want blog posts because we want articles. Remember, we want something that are reliable sources only. So uh, we have uh, in in academic um, in academic there are certain or there are specialized search engines that will only focus on articles. So whenever you search on bioethanol fermentation using these search engines, uh, what come out? Only the articles, no YouTube, no social media posts, no websites. Yeah? Uh, so that's the difference. Uh, so that will actually help you to focus more and get better results. Sometimes when you use Google, you may get some articles as well, but um, it's not organized. Lah. It's not it's not that really proper. Yeah? OK, so what are those search engines? Uh, so in academic, they are um, search engines that focuses on articles. Eh? For example, Google Scholar. So Google, if you if you just Google, Google is a general. So if you put Google Scholar, so what comes out are only the articles. So that will help you better. So Google Scholar, one. There, there are actually many like that. I introduced uh, just a few, and I think this one is also. Uh, is already useful. Uh, if you make full use of it, it's going to be useful and sufficient. So the second one is Science Direct. The third one is PubMed. Okay. So for example, I not going to talk about Google Scholar. Can you ask each other? Let's say you go to Google Scholar. No, I don't You will just Google the Google Scholar too. Okay. So this is how it looks like. Yeah? The other Google Scholar, the other Scholar edition uh, in addition to Google. So that's the difference. You can see uh, articles. You click on articles. Uh, so they can clue articles. So let's say you put bioethanol fermentation. Uh, so you can see all of these are all articles like the website uh, is unlike the Google, the normal Google. So that's the difference. And you can also skim your search. Maybe you want to get articles since 2018, the latest uh, five years. Yeah, uh, so you can click on that. So it will only list down those that after 2018. Yeah? So there is no article in 2010 or 2011. So that's the, the good thing about this search engine. Okay, and the same thing goes to Science Direct and also uh, others. Lah. I just do it satu je. You can actually get the, the free access from uh, from the library, uh, from uh, Petari, uh, Unimas Library. Uh, the access of Science Direct, the access of other search engine yeah, for the articles. Okay, so that's Google Scholar. Okay, and you can expect the same thing for for um, for other search engines. Lah, eh? Okay, so that is academic search engine. Uh, tapi, when we go for that, we just folder just now. So this one, uh, you can base it on it. Uh, this one, it just lists down uh, the articles, the possible articles related to the key points that you have typed. Yeah? For example, by communication. But sometimes if you click on each of that, you may not, uh, sometimes they give you the full access, but sometimes you may not get the full access. So if let's say I click on this, yeah? see, you click on that and it will be directed to this journal. Yeah? So this is uh, the journal, the name of the journal is Green Chemistry. Yeah? I mentioned just now there are many types of journal, many names of journal. So this one is one of the journals. So you see this one, you cannot get the full access actually. They will just give you the abstract. So you can read the abstract whether this article is what you want or not. But if let's say you want to read the full article, you can see uh, there there are option to buy the article or log in. Uh, if let's say you use your, maybe I don't know, maybe sometimes Unimas may not cover all the journals, but if let's say you cannot 
it, it shows here it's not it's not a free paper it's not a free there is no free access okay so what you have to do of course uh, i don't i would not ask you to buy that curve okay uh, one of the ways is to use institution credentials okay uh, maybe you uh, use the Unimas, tapi tak semua Unimas ada. Uh, the easiest option that we always do is uh, look for the DOI. So there is an information of the article. This one, eh? DOI. So DOI ni is like um, the ID of the article. So every article published in a journal, it must have DOI. Uh, I forgot what it stands for, but it's, it's actually the, the ID. Lah. You can see the ID. So you copy this one. Copy this. So where you want to get the free article? So now you cannot get it from here. So another trick that I want to introduce is uh, sites where you can download the articles for free. Okay, here I introduce Science Hub. Okay, you can also go for a uh, research gate. Research gate is a uh, is a social media for uh, researchers. Tapi yang tu macam uh, you have to look for maybe help lah. Maybe you want to say who have the article of uh, free article of uh, this one. Uh, so you have to ask for help from other researchers. So it's not uh, straightforward. Uh, so Science Hub is more straightforward. Okay. So you, what is Science Hub? Science Hub first. Uh, let's have a look at it. It's a it's a shadow library website that provides free access to millions of papers. Okay, this is one of the important research hacks. Eh? So you must know Science Hub. So how you want to get that just now, the, the paper just now, you go to Science Hub. So how to go to Science Hub? Sometimes um, the website of Science Hub ni, dia selalu bertukar, dia punya link tu. So you have to Google it every time. Uh, so maybe you can try the first option here. Okay, let's say you go to here. So here you can see that enter URL or DOI. So here is where you have to paste your DOI, uh, DOI just now. Okay, so, um, uh, and don't type the keywords. Uh, uh, so it's different. So you have to type the DOI of the article that you want to access. So open. Oh, no. What <laughs> did you get? Oh, that's not included this article yet. So, okay, maybe try yang lain lah. Sometimes dia tak update lagi ni. Okay, let's say try yang lah. Tapi that's how it works lah. Okay, this one is another article. Let's copy this. Hope this one works. Sure whether this link is going back or not. Let me try this one. Okay. Okay. Uh, is that yes? Yes. The sign sub me data stable sign at the Punya website. There, so sometimes I have to go to key. Okay. Ah, so, uh, Science Hub dia kadang-kadang dia tak, dia tak proper stable, dia punya URL. So, you have to go the, yang, yang I paling suka pergi wiki, go to that uh, URL on wiki. Okay. Okay, buddy. Lama. Tak tahu. Wait, wait. Okay, this works. Ah, uh, right. Uh, so, science hub ni, kalau you tak dapat klik macam contohnya yang dekat Google tu, if let's say it doesn't work, 
it doesn't direct you to the uh, to the paper. You can try on that day. About um, the reason is science hub dia dia bukan illegal dia macam uh, dia selalu di mana ya? dia selalu macam dia tak stable lah. The, the link is not stable, so you have to try many links, many 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 versions. Eh? Okay, this one works just now. So that's how it works. Eh? Tengok tadi, uh, you put on the DOI on this field, okay, and then you open, okay, and it will direct you to the uh, PDF. This is actually the PDF. So, kalau we do the card, um, computer, this one is the card, I, the card iPad, uh, on your computer, you can download the paper. There is an option for you to download the paper, okay, download the paper. So that's how you find uh, free articles, um, free research articles, okay, Science Hub. So you should know this, the existence of this uh, website. Okay. So yang kena ingat adalah you have to enter the DOI, not the key uh, keywords. Eh? So that's, that's the thing that you need to know. So another one, another tools, um, are tools that you can use to overview related articles within a scope or within a niche or within a year. Okay, I introduce you two uh, tools. The first one is housing.com. So under housing.com, there is a software called Publish or Perish. So this one is a free software that you can download. So you just Google housing.com, Publish or Perish. Uh, go for the download. Uh, you have to download it. Uh, to your computer, okay? So once you download it to the computer, so first what it does, this software, it will retrieve and analyzes uh, academic citations. Meaning to say that when you put the keywords, it will list down all articles related to that keywords. It's, it's actually about the same with Google Scholar just now. Tapi dia in a more organized way lah. You akan nampak macam-macam. I mean like different... Um, Sometimes you may you may want the articles indexed by Scopus, contohnya. Uh, so it it will release all the articles, the list of articles under that category. Okay, so this is how it works. Okay, let me show you on uh, the the computer. Okay, uh, we are about to finish, so bear with me. So. Yeah, let's say how it works. I, I, because I have already the public, uh, the publish or perish in my laptop. Okay, uh, so how, this is how it looks. Um, yeah, so once you have downloaded it into your uh, computer, okay, when you click it, so this is the interface. So how to use this? So let's say here, okay, let's say here, I put the keywords. You have to type the keywords. For example, I put bioethanol fermentation. Okay. Uh, and then I can select the years yeah, from, let's say, 2015 to 2022 only. Uh, uh, so let's say I search, uh, I search. So it will uh, take some time to complete the search. So you can see that... Um, See, this is the number of results or articles. Yeah? So this one is from Google Scholar. So maknanya uh, article-article ni dia ada di, how to say that, di index ataupun disenaraikan under certain uh, bodies. Yeah? One of them is Google Scholar, uh, other scopus. So uh, it has its uh, nilah, different name. So, for example, this one is under Google Scholar. So, you can see that you can get the list of all the articles. Very specific, kan? You know, bioethanol. Semua pasal bioethanol. Semua article. Semua pasal bioethanol fermentation. And it's between 2015 and 2022. Uh, okay. So, how do you want to look at each of these? For example, I click on this. Eh? I double click. Uh, so, it will direct me to the website of the journal. Uh, and again, here... Uh, some of the journals may not give a free access. Okay, contohnya yang ni dapat kot. 
So some of them can, but some of them uh, are not available. Ini boleh. Okay, ini boleh. So this one you can download it. Uh, but if let's say those yang you tak dapat, uh, you tak dapat uh, access, uh, so you do the same thing lah. You copy the DOI, go to Science Hub. Okay. So Harzing ni, uh, this publish or perish software, uh, the purpose is just to list down all these articles. Just for you to overview semua articles. Tapi tak semestinya dia akan bagi you free access. Okay, so that's the thing that you have to know. So that is harvesting. Uh, the second one is, um, yeah, the last one. Ah. So, the last one is connected papers. The second one is, uh, if you go to the... The second one, the second tool is Connected Papers. It's called Connected Papers. Uh, connectedpapers.com. So it's another, uh, it's, a, it's a web application. Uh, this one you don't have to download. So you can use uh, the website directly, uh, provided that you have internet. Okay, so you go to connectedpapers.com. So what this um, website is all about, uh, so is a is an application that will help you to overview uh, the connection of the papers. Okay, contohnya, let's say I this is uh, what you will uh, be directed to once you type connectedpapers.com. So let's say you type bioethanol fermentation. Okay, okay, and then uh, you click build a graph. Can you share it? Can you have, can you see my screen? No, oh, Okay, you click build a graph. So what you will see, okay, so dia sama juga sebenarnya, dia ada a list of papers but uh, the additional uh, feature of this uh, application, let's say you click on one of these papers, okay, so you can see uh, the connection between the papers, okay, so for example here, so each of the dot or not here, yang bulat-bulat ni, they call not, N-O-D-E, not. So it represents a paper. So if you zoom in, so you can see that how this paper is actually connected to, like for example, Young 2014, this paper is connected to Shang 2015. Means that in Young 2014, uh, sorry, in Shang 2015, uh, they have cited Young. They have cited these papers. So connection means they have cited, they have cited the papers. So from here, uh, the beauty of this app is that you can see the overview of, let's say, this bioethanol fermentation. Who are the people who have reported it, and the connection. Okay, uh, so that's what the the name of the app is all about: connected, uh, connected papers. Okay, uh, so Yani, you click on this. You can also click on to get the to get the full paper. Uh, sama juga lah. You can you will be directed to the journal of the paper, but sometimes some of the journals may not give you free access. So if let's say you cannot access uh, the paper freely, you can copy the DOI, go to Science Hub. Okay, so that's how you uh, make full use of the tools. Uh, so it's not just one tool, but you merge the use of the tools okay all right i think that's it for today um so basically we have covered um let me go to the we have covered So we have covered we have covered uh, scientific article writing. Okay, scientific article writing. Um, what is the purpose of writing a scientific paper? The structure of a scientific paper, and also the tools for literature review. 
Okay, so hope you can use all the tools that I've mentioned just now. Uh, dia tak banyak lah, tapi I tak nak introduce banyak-banyak. If you if you make full use of this, is sufficient, you can say. Google Scholar, Science Direct, PubMed, Science Hub. Uh, uh, the most important thing is you know how to use it and what's the purpose of each of that. Okay, uh, so harvesting ni untuk apa? Untuk, anal, untuk get the list of all the papers. Uh, connected papers uh, also the same. But if let's say you want to get the full access, if you cannot get it for free, go to Science Hub. Okay. Uh, and yeah, I forgot to mention uh, Research Gate. Research Gate, do you know Research Gate? Research Gate uh, is a social media, it's like Facebook, but uh, the purpose of Research Gate is to connect researchers. So the theme is about research. So when you join Research Gate, sama juga lah, you can follow orang. Uh, and you can be followed by others, uh, the same concept as Facebook, uh, but you are talking about research, don't talk about other things lah, uh, you are talking about articles, uh, let's say you want to get the, uh, let's say you follow researcher ni kan, let's say one researcher, this researcher published this and uh, certain articles, but you cannot get the articles for free, so you can write a message to the, to the researcher, uh, you want to say that uh, I'm interested with your research, uh, can I have a copy of your article, uh, so that's the purpose of research kit, and sometimes you can also ask questions related to research, okay? uh, so that is research kit. Lah. Okay, I think that's it, uh, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I'll share back the attendance. Okay, so those who have scanned your attendance, you may leave. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, yeah, welcome. Uh, you can start working on your assignment, uh, your proposal too. Okay, uh, the deadline is somewhere in June, so you have to work uh, by now. Any question on that, you can uh, email me. Thank you, Doctor. Welcome. 